Peripherals are hardware attached to a computer, but external to the main case that houses the CPU, hard drives, and other such equipment. They are basically devices that allow people to communicate to the computer. It is generally a good idea, although not as important as it used to be, to add and remove hardware from the computer while it is turned off. Things such as USB storage devices and keyboards, mice can generally be inserted and removed at a whim with no consequence, however more advanced things such as printers should be installed according to the manufacturer's instructions, which may include shutting down your computer. There are wired and wireless keyboards, and mice. Wired keyboards usually plug into a USB slot. Older style keyboards use the PS2 socket at the back of a desktop. PS2 to USB adapters are available. Wireless keyboards work by Bluetooth, infrared, IR, or radio frequency, RF. Bluetooth is built into most laptops so a Bluetooth keyboard or mouse can connect with no extra equipment. Most desktops do not have Bluetooth built in but a USB Bluetooth key can be used to add it. RF keyboards and mice need a receiver plugged into the computer. The transmitter is usually built into the keyboard or mouse. The mouse is an input device which is primarily used by physically moving the device across a surface. This causes a pointer symbol, called a cursor, to move across the screen. The other input comes from pressing a button while the cursor is over an object on the monitor, or clicking. All mice have at least one button, with the most common layout having three. Gaming mice may have seven buttons. One button mice. The Apple Mighty Mouse is the only mouse known to most people which uses a single button. This button is usually activated by pushing on the front of the mouse, or pushing the entire mouse down. The right click is done by pressing a control or control key on the keyboard while pressing the main button. These are only used with Macintosh OS, such as Mac OS X. Two-button mice, the second most common layout, more common in older computers, which has a button on the left and right, usually for the index and middle finger. While less useful than a three-button mouse, they are, when teamed with a standard keyboard, capable of performing almost all computer tasks. Three-button mice, the most common layout, fundamentally the same as a two-button mice, but with a third button, the middle button, added between the left and right click buttons. While the mouse technically has three buttons, this may be confusing to some users, as the middle center click button is also a scroll wheel. This design allows the user to scroll through documents, make selections, and do other tasks by moving a finger. The other way to is to press an arrow key or page up, page down key on a keyboard. The center button can also be press inwards to create a middle click button. There are two other major differences in mice, which is optical, laser mice, and ball mice. This is how the mouse tells where it is, with the laser measuring the distance it crosses when it is moved, and the ball measuring how it rotates. The laser is generally more accurate and less of a hassle to use, and can be used on more surfaces, but the ball mouse is cheaper. Ball mice are rarely seen today. The last important consideration when buying a mouse is size. You should always try to put your hand on a mouse and move it around, to see how well it feels in your hand. If it feels awkward, small, big, long, or short, look for something better not only will your hands thank you, but you will be more efficient. Media devices, floppy, CD-ROM, DVD, USB, these devices carry data, in the same way that a hard drive does, but are much more portable. They are the primary method of storing data outside of a computer, and the main method of transferring information between computers without the use of a network, such as the internet. There are three main types of these in use today. CD-ROM. Mostly read-only memory unless labeled, rewritable, capable of storing 700 megabytes of data, CDs have been the most common method of storing data for most of the last decade or so.
they are being largely replaced by DVDs and USB drives. DVD, capable of storing 4.7 GB of data in their single layer form and 8.5 GB in their double layer form, they are the most common method today for most store bought programs, as well as videos. USB, flash, while not usually used by commercial software, USB, sticks, and flash, cards, have become popular ways of storing data because of their ease of use and low cost. While sizes range from 2 GB on old units to 256 GB on larger, more expensive modern units, the average stick today is 4 or 8 GB, with an average 4 GB USB stick costing about 15 US. The floppy disk has been phased out. The monitor is the main method for the computer to produce output, in the same way a book has pages. A book filled with letters, but in a way you can't possibly understand or even see is of no use to you, and the same is true for a computer. While older monitors CRTs, were rather bulky like TVs, newer monitors or LCDs are much more compact and can be easily lifted. Tip. To take proper care of your monitor, always be sure that the screen is not left on a static image for long periods of time. This can burn the image into the monitor, meaning that it will have a ghosting effect, even when that image is not displayed. This can not only be highly annoying, but in some cases, make it so the monitor needs to be replaced. To avoid this, either set a moving screensaver, which will trigger after a set amount of time, or simply turn the monitor off. If you have a printer attached to your computer you can print your information and keep a physical copy of data. Depending on what type of printer you have, you can print in color, double-sided or book form. The output quality of some printers goes from draft, to save ink, all the way to photo quality.